Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono red goblins deck featuring Krenko Mob Boss as our commander. It's been around for a while, but we've gotten a few nice upgrades over time, so it was a good moment to feature the deck. This 4-mana uh, 3-3 three, three can tap, creating X-1-1 one, one, red goblin creature tokens where X is the number of goblins we control. So if we ever get to untap with Krenko for a couple turns in a row, it can usually overwhelm the opponent with goblins, and that's very much our game plan. I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with ways to kind of abuse all the tokens we can generate with Krenko, or just ways to activate it a second time each turn. Then we also have a lot of haste enablers, since if we can immediately activate Krenko the turn we play it, we can pull ahead pretty quickly. Then we've got some mana acceleration to try and play Krenko on turn 3 ideally, and then ways to make even more mana as the game progresses to maybe replay it if it gets removed. Then we've got a category dedicated to removal. Most of these are just goblins themselves that can maybe deal some damage. Then we've got more goblins that can generate some goblin tokens to help us go wide, and then a Krenko becomes much more effective if we already have a few goblins in play. And then we've got kind of the final category of goblins, which are mostly ways of generating card advantage, or maybe ways of pumping up the rest of the team, and then the miscellaneous section including Blood Moon to punish greedy mana bases, and then Icon of Ancestry and Vanquisher's Banner, more ways to pump the team while generating card advantage. So now let's go for the deeper dive, starting with our initial section, where we've got Goblin Bombardment, pretty fitting in this deck, can sacrifice a creature to deal one damage to any target. So once we start making lots of goblins with Krenko, at the very least even in response to removal or a sweeper, we can at least sacrifice all those goblins and get some damage out of it. Can be especially effective alongside Pashalik, which will deal an additional point of damage whenever a goblin dies, so that's also in our removal section. Then we also have Impact Tremors, saying whenever a creature enters under our control, it deals one damage to each opponent, so we get immediate damage from our goblins entering, even if they later get removed. And then a Sting, if we can equip Krenko, essentially lets us activate Krenko twice per turn cycle, which can get out of hand very quickly. Then our haste enablers include Goblin Motivator, this can just tap to give a creature haste. Torch Courier has to be sacrificed, so it has to be used wisely. Then a Battle Cry Goblin, not the best way to immediately give Krenko haste, but once we've got more mana, it can also pump up all our goblins, so it can be quite deadly. Goro Goro just requires one red mana to give the entire team haste, so we can give both Krenko haste as well as all the tokens we generate in that turn. Then the Swiftfoot Boots can both protect Krenko, giving it hexproof as well as giving it haste. Then a Rising of the Day, giving our legendary creatures one extra power, and all creatures have haste, so we can both activate Krenko right away, as well as attack with all the goblins we generate. And then Goblin Chieftain and Goblin War Chief probably don't need an introduction. These are awesome ways to give the entire team haste, Chieftain also pumping the team, while War Chief gives us a one mana discount. Then we get to the mana acceleration, where a Skirk Prospector can be quite nice if we make a few goblin tokens early, as we can now sacrifice a goblin to add a red, and then once we activate Krenko, we can also quickly empty our hand while a goblin makes a treasure when it enters, and then we've got a whole host of two mana artifacts, Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and the recent Iron Crag. And then at 3 mana there's Fable to help us make more treasure with a Goblin Shaman token. We've got Heraldic Banner naming red, both pumping the team and giving us extra mana. Herald's Horn naming Goblin gives us a 1 mana discount and can provide more card advantage. And then at the Influx Array is the only alchemy card I'm including here, just because it's on theme and I haven't gotten the chance to play it yet. And then at 6 mana, Cage Sun is pretty pricey, but then it essentially doubles up all our mana while giving the team plus 1 plus 1, so also makes it easier to replay Krenko in the face of removal. And speaking of removal, there's a Fanatical Firebrand to sacrifice and deal 1 damage. Gleeful Demolition can destroy artifacts from the opponent. Occasionally we can destroy our own artifact just to make 3 goblin tokens to go wide. A Lightning Bolt, of course, a classic. Then there's a Crater Maker that can be sacrificed to blow up colorless non-land permanents or deal 2 damage to a creature. Amber Hauler can be sacrificed to deal 2 to any target. There's the Incinerator, which we can cycle, drawing a card, and then also dealing X damage, where X is the number of goblins we control. It's also great if we're going wide. There's Pashalik, as we mentioned, whenever a goblin we control dies or Pashalik dies, we get to deal 1 damage to any target. So this is awesome with any other sacrifice outlet, whether it's a Skirk Prospector or a Goblin Bombardment, for instance. 
then the Bandit Lord will pump the team, and if we activate it after using Krenko, we can deal a ton of damage to any target, including the opponent. The Chain Warlord will deal 1 to every opposing creature and Planeswalker on a 3-3 first strike. Twinshot Sniper we can channel for 1 under red to deal 2 to any target, and can also be cast for 4 mana. And then a Volley Veteran when it enters, similar to the uh, Gem Palm Incinerator, deals damage equal to the number of goblins we control to any creature and opponent controls. And the Trash Master can sacrifice any goblin to destroy target artifact. So once we get going with Krenko, the opponent's artifacts will no longer be safe and also gives our team a plus one plus one. And then we get to the Goblin Token section to help us go wide. Dragon Fodder, Instigator, and Krenko's Command all make two goblins. There's the Tin Street Kingpin, which can make a lot of goblins if we can keep attacking with it, and also benefits from our lords pumping it up. Then there's a Legion War Boss and Squee, which can make goblins each turn. We've got you see a pair of goblins to make a pair of 1-1s at instant speed, can also pump the team. The Hordling Outburst from Cans of Tarkir originally can make three 1-1 goblin tokens. The Beetle Bank Chief is a 2-2 making two 1-1 one -one goblins. And then Siege Gang Commander makes three goblin tokens and also has a nice activated ability where we can sack a goblin to deal two damage to any target. And then our final section of goblins includes Foundry Street Denizen, which benefits from creatures entering, increasing its power. Oracle can sacrifice a creature to exile the top card, and until end of turn we can play it, so that can provide a bit of card advantage. Horde Master pumps the team, and if our goblins die, they can potentially get replaced by another goblin. Snoop lets us play goblins off the top, can maybe even copy an activated ability. Moria Marauder, a relatively recent addition, can also provide a lot of card advantage if we manage to hit the opponent with our goblins, and with double strike we can potentially enable the ability twice just with the Marauder itself. Then there's a Metallic Mimic naming Goblin, giving us an extra plus one counter when our goblins enter. The Matron can find any goblin in our deck, so it gives us a ton of utility. Ringleader will provide card advantage when it enters. The Gutter Dweller makes a pair of rank tokens and can also help us sacrifice our creatures to provide card advantage. A Brash Taunter is indestructible and can punish the opponent for damaging it. And finally, Muxus can also provide a ton of card advantage by putting a bunch of goblins in play when it enters, ideally giving the entire team haste in the process. And then our miscellaneous includes Blood Moon to punish greedy mana bases. And then as we mentioned, Icon of Ancestry giving the team plus one plus one can activate it to find a goblin in the top three. And then a Vanquisher's Banner giving the team plus one plus one. And whenever we cast a goblin, we get to draw. So we want to make sure we have a high density of goblins to make some of these payoffs worth it. And then our mana base has a lot of basic mountains, and then a few utility lands like Castle Embereth to pump the team. Then of the Bugbear, of course, quite synergistic as a creature land. The Battlements, another way to give Krenko haste. And then a Crucible, potentially making a pair of 1-1s. One -ones. Cavern of Souls, making our goblins uncounterable. And then a Nykthos can give us a nice mana boost, since a lot of our goblins provide double devotion. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Narset, so this is going to be a pretty tough matchup. If our opponent has removal for Krenko, which is likely, then uh, they can probably go over the top. That being said, we've got a Motivator, so we can give Krenko haste. Matron can get something useful. So it's no turn 3 Krenko, which would be the dream, but uh, I'll give it a shot. And then what to get with Matron? I have a few options, can get another haste enabler. Could get Prospector to give us more mana. I don't think we're going all the way up to Muxus. Okay, Bombardments gives us a two mana play at least. Turn to Guardian Idol. Okay, play Matron, I think, over Pashalik. Although that's another kind of interesting decision here. So we've got Krenko lined up for next turn. And then what would we like afterwards? Crater Maker could be an answer to a large artifact. If they're trying to ramp, the Marauder can be pretty nice. Or we can just go straight to Muxus. Maybe go for Trash Master, which can destroy their artifacts repeatedly. So we can try and keep their mana in check. So if we feel like we don't want to expose Krenko to removal, we can go for Trash Master first. For now, Celestus. So if they have a land, they could already play Narset next turn, unless we 
trash their artifacts, which might be needed. So we can give Trashmaster haste. Attack for five, and then sack Matron to blow up Celestas at the very least. Opponent's gonna brainstorm, that's fine. I don't think I blow up Guardian Idol, since both of my creatures are pretty useful. And then next turn, hopefully, Krenko with haste can start making tokens. And then we can blow up Guardian Idol. Cast out. Going for Trashmaster. So we'll sack it on the way out. And then now it's time for Krenko, I imagine. Could also command plus Pashalik. Which is a bit more mana efficient. And then next turn Krenko with haste will make a few more goblins. Although right now it already makes two of them, which is pretty much equivalent to what we would be doing otherwise. Seize the spoils, okay. Pudon keeps digging, so next turn they can try and play Narset. They might have some expensive cards in hand by now. Opponent foretells likely Alrun's Epiphany. Ooh, Muxus. One mana shy of casting it. So Pasha Lake plus Command. Activate Krenko. Pasha Lake Haste. Attack. And then, yeah, this could be just lethal with a bombardment and Pasha Lake. So we'll start pinging. And yeah, with more than 10 goblins, that's 20 damage basically with a bombardment at the very least. So that's game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing Magda. So ideally, we want some uh, cheap removal. There's not much in the deck. Turn two Signet, hopefully turn three Krenko, but uh can I imagine our opponent has a few removal spells of their own, so it would be better off making tokens first. Yeah, this hand's a little sketchy if we fail to draw additional lands, although Pashalek is pretty good here. So I'll give it a shot. So against turn two Magda. Alright, it's gonna be an automaton first. So opponent's trying to get as many dwarves in play as possible, maybe. Yeah, I'll go for Signet still. Does mean they get to play Magda, attack, make a treasure right away. Maybe I should just put something big in play. Oracle blocks this profitably, but they're likely to have a burn spell. So maybe just Krenko's command can trade for Automaton. And uh, if they have a burn spell, it doesn't matter too much. So there's Magda. And a candy trail. Okay. Opponent is still attacking. Take that trade. Possible they have a pump spell instead of a burn spell. Just a bolt on my author goblin now. Okay, we can double spell Signets. And Instigator here, same reason as last turn. And then we've got a few ways to pump the team. Pasha Lake, if it gets removed, can take out Magda. Strangle my Instigator, which provided our devotion for Nykthos. And foretell maybe a Demon Bolt as an answer for Krenko. Okay, so I'll go for Pasha Lake as a more mana efficient play that, at least if they kill it, will take out Magda. I'm 
So still no treasures for Magda. So you search up a powerful dragon. Dwarven Mine's pretty good here with the fetch land, getting a dwarf token. And I'll get two treasures. Yeah, I'll block Magda. And then Pasha Lake with the ability can finish off the dwarf if they want to protect with plaza, so be it. So they have a demon bolt now is probably the time to cast it. Uh -huh, it was a uh, dwarven reinforcements instead. Making a pair of dwarves. Alright, so next turn if they attack, they get three more treasure. We're getting close to five, which is a danger zone. So let's see, if we play Chieftain, next turn we can immediately activate Krenko. Taunter is also a pretty safe investment here. But our opponent is down to one card in hand, so maybe it's safe to kind of plan for Krenko. And then Chieftain plus Horde Master also builds up our devotion for Nykthos. And now I've got a 4-4, four, four, which can maybe block profitably. Opponent sends a team. And unexpected windfall now makes two more treasures so they can activate Magda. And uh, yeah, this cannot be good for me. We'll see what dragon they get, or maybe an artifact. Portal to Phyrexia, that'll do. At least we get a few triggers here, but uh, the damage has been done. Horde Master doesn't find any goblins. Well, at least I'm glad I didn't play a Taunter into a portal to Phyrexia. And then our opponent's probably bringing back some of our creatures at this point. Magda's back to the command zone. So maybe it's time for Krenko here. And then next turn hope to activate it a few times. There's nothing we know of that can answer it right away. Goes for a Goblin Chieftain. Uh, this is a little bit suspicious. I'll take it. Doesn't seem worth it. So possible they have a 2 damage burn spell. So Mimic into Dark Dweller if we want to get the counter. If they have removal, they might take out Mimic in response, so then having Oracle in play first would be slightly better. Sure, I guess the plus one counter is not super relevant here. Although it doesn't seem like they had anything. And activate Krenko. And pass it back. All right, so we're building up an army. If our opponent gets Pasha Lake, they can use it as removal, taking out one toughness stuff pretty easily. Goes for Instigator. Want to avoid trading while we control Krenko. Altar seems acceptable. And uh, I don't even think I trade for Magda here. Just take it. All right, next up is Brash Taunter. Activate Krenko. And we can attack back. Put 
Harkonnen finally going for Pashalik. So they've got a bit of mana to activate it if they want to. Brash Taunter at least gives us a solid blocker that can punish an attack. And we're just going face. If they try and take out a creature, we can sacrifice to Oracle. Seems unlikely for them to mill us to death with Altar. I guess it's setting up their portal to Phyrexia as well. And a play with fire is not gonna really do much, other than deal two more damage. Opponent activates Pashalik. Going face. Alright, so Magda dies, opponent takes two more damage. And the Squee gives us another attacker. So Brash Taunter can fight Chieftain to shrink their team down if we'd like. Don't even know if that's really necessary. Could also just uh, activate Krenko, activate Oracle a bunch with the mana from Nykthos and see what we can find. Uh, let's see, your opponent's got six blockers. And we've got definitely more than six attackers, so if we attack all out here, then yeah, they should be just dead on board. So there's no need to even activate Krenko here. Just send the team. And if we don't want Spashalik to trigger, we could also sacrifice the Oracle. But uh, yeah, opponent's still taking lethal. Alright, GG's. Managed to beat a portal to Phyrexia. Awesome. I'll do the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the partners, which can hit incredibly hard. We probably need a bit of mana acceleration, ideally a bit of removal as well. This doesn't really do that. Alright, this is better. Sniper, maybe not the best removal spell in the matchup, but uh, I'll take a turn to Cold Steel Heart, setting up early Krenko. And then if their creatures don't trample, Krenko can potentially keep chumping whatever they give haste. So we'll see how a turn 3 Krenko lines up. If our opponent obviously keeps up removal on turn 2, we can take a different approach. Paradise Druid likely setting up their partners, so Krenko it is. Then next turn, if Paradise Druid is tapped, we can maybe snipe it. Or we can double spell Iron Crag with a Fable. But it's got a tap land, so... Makes it more likely that they're gonna kill Krenko here. Ozolith, that's fine. And the Merge Keeper. Okay. So we get to untap with Krenko, which was our hope. So this name's Goblin. So we've got a total of five mana. Going Iron Crag and then Cast Sniper, still pretty efficient. And then I suppose we take out the Merge Keeper. Which can have pretty good synergy with the partners. Activate Krenko, pump Dennis in a bunch. And we're off to the races. Even have a Castle Emberth to pump the team. Which could try and close out the game a turn sooner. Partners is fine. So if we play Pashalik, 
I can't quite activate Castle Embereth, so I'll just play both. Pashalik and Fable activate Krenko. Activate this now. So they have a first striker to block Denison profitably. Would still trigger Pasha Lake to deal one damage. So maybe an all-out attack is reasonable. And then if they take out two of my creatures, we still get a few points of damage across. Yeah, they can actually block with Paradise Druid since we'll still only have two damage total, which is not enough to finish off the partners. So we'll just deal two upstairs. So, not the best attack here, to be fair. But we're still pushing a bit of damage. And we should still have enough to cross the finish line next turn. Especially with Castle Embereth. Verger's Gearhulk, that's a nice one. I'll load a bunch of counters onto the partners. Can now give six counters to the Gearhulk. But they're still not in a position to attack us. And live to tell the tale. We almost have lethal if we just block with everyone, just from Pashalik triggers. Alright, and a Siege Gang is not bad either, but uh, yeah, we're just gonna activate Castle Embereth. And, uh,. That should be good enough. Even without activating Castle, we would get there with Pasha Lake Triggers. GG's. Got lucky to dodge early interaction. Although the opponent's deck is probably not running too much of it, since they want to try and get their own game plan going. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw and uh, facing Golos, so this is going to be one tough matchup. Although Blood Moon could potentially bail us out. Of course, they can still cast Golos, but uh, yeah, they'll have to fetch up their basics if they want to activate the ability. I'll give this a shot. We're certainly lacking goblins, but kind of just want to see what happens if we uh, land a Blood Moon. Can bolt any mana creatures they play early. So far, no basics. And uh, sure, we'll go for bombardments. No response. Alright, time for Blood Moon. Oh, it's got a lot of mountains all of a sudden. But uh, at 5 mana, Golos can still... Rescue them, but nope, Blood Moon leads to a concession. I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Galazath Prismari, so can expect quite a few removal spells and counters, so it's not going to be easy for Krenko to stick around. We do have a pretty devotion heavy draw with Nykthos, Wily Goblin, Chain Whirler, so that's one way to potentially get ahead of mana. And there's even more devotion with the Marauder. And then Goro Goro to give the team haste. Yeah, let's play Signets. And then next turn we could potentially double spell. So if we Wily Goblin... I won't be able to do anything but play Goro Goro. Still probably fine. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't want to sack my treasure token to activate Nykthos. Flick a coin, a nice answer. So we lost a bit of our devotion. So if they play Galazeth, we'll need a few more goblins to take it out with Veteran or Incinerator. Opponent passes. I guess they want to try and counter Krenko here, but I don't think that's our plan, at least not yet. Instead, can play Moria Marauder and give it haste. Opponent's gonna bounce Goro Goro. Sure. So we can replay it. And then still activate. Although it's not really gonna accomplish much other than getting in for a bit of damage. Still seems worthwhile. An Iron Crag, I wouldn't be able to play. Okay, pass it back. So now Nykthos is still breaking even, but once we play Chain Warler, it can actually go off. So they still essentially have four mana available. Okay, so if we play Chain Warler, we can then maybe channel Incinerator to finish off Galzeth. That resolves. They wouldn't be able to counter the cycling, but they could to remove one of my creatures in response. So what if I just activate Nykthos, sacking the treasure? We've got six mana. Can play Krenko, which likely gets countered. If not, I could still activate it with haste. Or we could play Thin Street Kingpin, cycle incinerator, and still attack with the team. Don't hate that idea. So start by playing Krenko. And then cycle. And then they would need two removal spells to save Galzeth. And Delusion response, that's fine. Okay, so we get to give the team haste and then get a nice attack in, triggering Marauders a bunch and Krenko. Haven't played Land for the turn yet. And hope to dodge a sweeper, pretty much. So I can play a land denizen at the very least. Hmm, Battlements is interesting. With their opponent at 11, there's also an argument for just playing a tap to Den of the Bugbear as better insurance against a sweeper. So we can just activate it and hit them for 4. So it's a close call. Battlement, a way to give Krenko haste, but uh, without any goblins in play, making tokens is also not super exciting. So, um, yeah, a few things to consider. I'll just go for Dennis and keep it simple. And uh, hopefully dodge a board wipe. Okay, we get to untap. So now we've got a ton of mana. So it shouldn't be too difficult to play Krenko and give it haste. Let's activate Goro Goro. Activate Krenko. Activate Goro Goro again so all the tokens can attack. And Denison's popping off. So I'm curious to see what our opponent's holding. We're about to find out, I guess. Okay, attack all out, and we'll see what happens. Can't do anything else here. Maybe some instant speed sweeper. I see. Overloaded Cyclonic Rift, a classic. Yeah, that's a setback, to say the least. 
send it back to hand. And then we'll get back on the board with Signet. And uh, I want to say Marauder. Doesn't line up great against Galaseth, but we can increase our devotion, maybe play Volley Veteran. Okay, so maybe went a little bit too ham. Should have just gone for a more conservative attack and see what happens first, and then have more mana second main. Still a bit risky to let us untap. So Galazath, three mana left. And weaponry, kill Marauder. Okay, so if we go for Chain Warler, mana neutral for Nykthos purposes. Then play Denizen. And then, yeah, I guess we can finish off Galazath that way. And still play a tap to Den of the Bugbear. So we're back on the board. Galazath dealt with. Goro Goro to give the team haste. Den of the Bugbear can also apply more pressure. And our opponent passes with 7 mana total. Squeeze not bad. So let's see. We play Squee, can activate Nykthos, 6 mana, 7, 8, 9 total. So we could potentially activate a hasty Krenko with Goro Goro. That resolves. This is next. If they counter it, then we could opt to just animate the Den of the Bugbear instead, which was maybe a reason to play my Mountain. Epiphany. Hmm. Yeah, that's a setback. Counter. Bounce Chain Whirler. Copy Shaman Token. So we'll float some mana response. And then I'll just go for Chain Whirler plus Krenko, I guess. Opponent trades, takes three. They're getting within range of our Den of the Bugbear. Pirate's Prize is fine, so they still have four mana left. And they cannot find an answer, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, so yeah, managed to grind it out against Galzath onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Itali, Primal Conqueror. So we're gonna need to be off to a quick start. This hand doesn't quite do that, so take my mulligan. Okay, this is better. We're missing a third land, but we've got an Iron Crag, and then Fable can help. As much as I want to snipe the elf, I think we gotta go for Iron Crag. So we can at the very least play Fable next turn if we miss on a land. Settle finds a mountain. And now we can play Krenko and get the ball rolling. And then next turn could uh, ideally go Fable and snipe the elf. Could also cycle the incinerator I suppose. Can be a haven, three mana left, and a stomper. So even if we take out the elf, our opponent should be able to play a tally next turn. Okay, at least we still have our Krenko to try and go wide. So there's no point in taking out the elf. Can just go for motivator plus fable, activate Krenko. And try and hit some land drops. Itali finds Terror of the Peaks. Yeah, that's a good one. We'll have to 
take it out with incinerator. A wily goblin's manageable. And a mystic can now shoot the motivator. Okay, so what do we discard? Ringleader is probably worth keeping. Sniper, not that amazing. And then Caged Sun. I guess it's not a bad combo with the Ringleader. Uh, once we need to kind of empty our hand. So maybe it's just Sniper that goes. Okay, Banner's not bad. So we can play Banner on red. Still Cycle Incinerator. And take out Terror. And then Krenko can activate. I guess I'll just do it now. Itali attacks. So they can transform only as a sorcery. I think I'll just take it. Don't really want to throw away my goblins. And an escape second main, finding more ramp. That's fine. So next turn we could play Caged Sun. And then I guess that's it for the turn. Unless the uh, Shaman attacks makes a treasure. And then I'll see. It's only if a land is used for Caged Sun. And then our opponent would be able to block our Shaman profitably with Stomper. So it's probably just Cage Sun and that's it. Alright, opponent stomping the Shaman. If we want to maximize the number of goblins, I guess a Ringleader is an option too. Ooh, Banner. Yeah, I guess that's an incentive to get Cage Sun in place so we can make even more mana next turn and try and combo off. This will also pump the team. So. Activate Krenko. And then probably just hang back for now. And then next turn we'll be able to make a pretty significant attack, potentially just win the game. But we're also happy playing a longer game. Just gotta dodge a sweeper. Scram Gorger's fine. So a whole lot of mana. So we don't really want them to replay a tally. And yeah, opponent just uh, concedes here. Next turn we get to play Banner, Ringleader, draw a few cards, find more goblins, activate Krenko, and likely win the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing five color legends with Joda, the unifier. So the saving grace is that if we go wide enough with Krenko, we can just chum block their enormous creatures and hopefully keep up. For that to work, we need kind of a turn three Krenko, ideally. We have idle and goblin to try and enable that, although the rest of my hand's pretty bad. I guess bombardment lets us chump and then still sacrifice for a bit of damage, but I don't really want Icon. I guess Pashalik has synergy with bombardment too. So I guess I'm talking myself into this. Definitely still need to draw a couple lanes. But uh, we've got the tools to potentially keep up. So turn to idle, turn three, Krenko. Don't expect too much removal. And then, uh, yeah, we can start making goblins while still dealing damage even after chumping. Probably not gonna play Icon until a bit later in the game. Doesn't seem super important. Surprise their opponent didn't have a two mana play. They have pretty much perfect mana with double triome to start out. And yeah, they're keeping up more interaction. Possible they have a removal spell here. 
but uh, I think we still have to try Krenko. I guess with Motivator, there was a reason to play it slow. Antish Restoration can set up a Joda for next turn. And then we're looking at maybe a Pasha Lick and another one drop. Activate Krenko. Take it from there. No Joda this turn. Thalia and the Gidrog instead. So now our creatures enter tapped, which is certainly relevant. So how about Pashalik, play Prospector, and then activate Krenko. So now we could potentially cast more spells, sacking our goblins and dealing damage with Pashalik in the process, and maybe take out Thali and the Gidrog as well. That seems okay. So this can make mana. Play a Wally Goblin. Finish off Thalia. And then we can still play Denison and Motivator. And then next turn we can continue with Bombardment. And then, yeah, the combo of Bombardment with Pasha Lake means we can kind of mow down the opponent's creatures at will. As long as we keep activating Krenko. This might have been overkill just for Thalia and the Gidrog monster, but uh, it was going to get bigger with Joda, so... This was our best opportunity to take it out. A Vorinclex is a big one. Take our turn. And now we can double spell Icon and Bombardment. Which is pretty effective. Denison grows a bunch. I think I still show them the bombardments. And then what happens if we attack all out? 9, 10, 11. Yeah, I guess they could block Pasha Lick and then we lose out on a little bit of damage. So what if we just do an attack with Pasha Lick? I think that works. Blocks Prospector, so we want to sack to the Bombardment here. That's two damage, essentially. Plus another nine. And then, yeah, we can just finish them off with Bombardments. Two damage for each Goblin. Well, this uh, worked out better than expected. Careful when saying good game here, when we've got a bunch of things we need to target. I've made that mistake before. Sweet. All right, so we got to see Krenko goblins in action. And yeah, it's definitely one of the more powerful commanders out there if you can untap with it and activate it a few times. So that does mean we'll get some pretty lopsided matchups if we're up against other creature decks without a lot of interaction. We can usually take over. If we're up against more controlling decks, then we might struggle to ever make a goblin token with Krenko, and those games are going to be pretty tough. And of course, Krenko is also in the hell queue, so you're going to end up facing some pretty powerful commanders overall. So it's not the easiest deck to get your daily wins with just because you're going to face tough opposition. But if you like goblins, this is one of the more powerful commanders you can choose. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.